on the banks of the St. John's River. We are in Jacksonville, Florida, the baseball grounds. It's an exciting night of baseball coming your way. Two high power teams going toe to toe. They just don't like each other. And they're also pretty good baseball teams. Fifth ranked Florida State, second ranked Florida. It's all coming your way in a matter of moments. These two teams have been playing each other on the diamond since 1956, 246 meeting. But lately, this has been all about the Gators. They have won 11 of the last 12, and they won the earlier meeting this year down in Gainesville, 12 to 6. This will be the middle game of a three game series covering this season. Dave Neal alongside the big right hander from Stanford, big leaguer Kyle Peterson. Glad you could join us. And KP, I guess when you break down these two teams, obviously they can pitch it pretty well, they can catch it, and they can hit it. Otherwise, they don't show up in Omaha as much as they do. But what is it about this game that, that kind of if you could wrap your arms around it that you like so much. I like the offense. I mean I really like the offense and we've seen a lot more offense from Florida this year. Florida State's offense has been hot over the last few weeks but for the Gators if there was one hole last year granted they won the national title but it was it was not an overly offensive team. It is this year. They've hit 41 home runs as a ball club. They hit a ton last weekend again against Arkansas and their most complete player is the guy that'll hit third tonight and that's Jonathan India. I think he's going to play in the major leagues at third base and he looked like a major league type guy when he came in defensively. The offense has really come on this year and the powers continue to come with it. That was a grand slam in game two against Arkansas this previous week. The next day he would triple off the right field wall double down the left field line. He's a really complete player right now on the other side. It's another third baseman has got a chance to play in the big leagues. And it's Drew Mendoza who offensively has really been the leader of this Florida State club. Defense has lapsed a little bit this year. He's made seven errors already but at the plate and as a hitter Mendoza a key part of this offense can show you a lot of different things. The power continue to come one of the highest drafted players to show up in college a few years ago. Mike Martin been doing this a long time. He is 12 wins away from taking uh, the top spot in college baseball for most victories over a, a guy he has so much ref uh, respect for the late Augie Garrido. And here's how he filled out his lineup card for tonight. He'll start with Nick Durr at the top of the lineup. Jason Luke will hit second and left field. Rhett Applin will be at first base hitting third. Cal Raleigh, Drew Mendoza, Reese Albert, Stephen Wells, Rafael Bornegal, and Mike Salvatore. But really it's Jackson Luke who has been on a tear of late. Last five games, three home runs with a 368 batting average. On the mound for the Gators is a freshman. A lot of freshman arms down for in that uh, dugout for Kevin O'Sullivan. And this is the latest one. Jack Leftwich, 6'2", 210 pounder. What can we expect from him tonight? Well, as we've seen really over the last decade since Kevin O'Sullivan has been at Florida, the stuff does not lack. And for the freshman, it's a matter of just working yourself into the weekend rotation. He could be the next one. The stuff is that good. He can get into the mid-90s. And at times can really dominate. Where left which has struggled this year is just where too many fastballs have been left up and over the plate. But the stuff can be outstanding. And this is a freshman they think will push into that weekend rotation next year. So Durr will step in to lead things off for Florida State. The sophomore second baseman. Had a nice weekend in Chapel Hill. Matter of fact, both these teams had are in the midst of a really tough stretch. Florida State on the road at North Carolina took two of three over the weekend. Meanwhile, Florida at home against a highly talented and certainly a team that's built for Omaha, Arkansas. They took two of three from the Hogs. And now here you go, a top five matchup in your midweek game. Out to short, lip it across the diamond, one down. Florida defensively been pretty solid. Austin Langworthy in left field. Nick Horvath out in center. Will Dalton is in right field. In the infield, up the middle, Deacon Lippett and Blake Reese at short and second, respectively, on the corners. Jonathan India and Keenan Bell. And behind the plate is J.J. Schwartz. Jackson Luke, the two-hole hitter, steps in. 244 on the season. And a little bit of a struggle for Jackson. He led the team in batting average the first two years. Wearing a Seminole jersey, but has dipped down to 244 this year. But they think maybe they're seeing signs of him popping out of it. A great weekend. Reigning ACC player of the week right now is Luke. And Reese makes the play two down. 
job by Leftwich right there to throw that slider on the outside part of the plate. And he'll do that. He'll backdoor the slider. He can show you the changeup, the fastball again when it's right, can get into the mid 90s. It's been as high as 95 this year, but two ground balls and a very good early start for Jack Leftwich. Here's Red Applin. He looks at a first pitch strike, a three hole hitter over at first base, 290 on the year. The senior getting a lot of work due to some injuries. He's going to be in and out of the lineup at first base. But now sees uh, pretty much every game over at the corner. Tyler Holton there Friday night ace wasn't pitching he was going to play first base and Al Applin would rotate with him but with the injury to Holton on opening day which is a huge blow but Florida State's overcome that that's a story we'll get into later but yeah Applin seen a lot I mean Florida State lost the entire right side of the infield in their Friday night guy to start this season it's there's just not a lot of clubs that can do that and be 20 and 5 at this point in the season like Florida State is it's kind of been a next man up mentality and but they lost an All-American Tyler Holton preseason All-American in every publication that you saw and a kid that was going to play first base the days that he wasn't pitching. Tyler Daughtry the second baseman tore his ACL he was a leadoff hitter to start the year so it just it's a different Florida State lineup than they thought they'd have. And the walk by Apple this is a Florida State team that is among the best of the country at drawing those walks. And they get one there with two outs, and that'll take us to the cleanup man, Cal Raleigh. Well, Mike Martin Jr.'s offensive philosophy has always been patience at the plate. That's why they're tops in the country in walks. They'll drive you crazy if you don't throw strikes. Is there somebody more enjoyable to hang out with on a baseball field than Mike Martin? I don't think so. I mean, just. When he came walking from behind home plate tonight when the club got here. I mean clearly the wins speak for themselves but he is one of the absolute gentlemen in this game. Raleigh swings and misses you know it's I think just looking around the people that when he walked like he did he came out through the tunnel just when the team got here and there were three or four of us standing around everybody smiles right when he shows up. It's you just, have to. Right. Absolutely. Because he's used to smiling too. That ball's driven out to right. Dalton on the run makes a catch as he bangs into the wall. I don't think Cal Raleigh can hit it any harder than he did, but Will Dalton makes the catch. Wow. Go we'll get it, Will Dalton. Because this ball's covered. He stays in the inside part of the plate. Raleigh has real power, just three home runs, but that's a number that's going to continue to go up during the course of the year. But the Juco transfer, who leads Florida in home runs, saves a run right there. Sign in. Yesterday my life was filled with rain. Sunny. You smiled at me and really eased the pain. You gave to me your all in all. And now I feel ten feet tall. Sunny, one so true. I love you. in Jacksonville Florida number five Florida State number two Florida Dave Neal Kyle Peterson glad you could join us for this exciting midweek matchup not too often you get uh, this kind of powerhouse on display but that's the case tonight take a look at how Florida will attack Florida State offensively tonight and well Deacon Lippitt at the top of the lineup he's hitting 313 has really been stepping on the gas of late Nelson Maldonado your DH Jonathan India though we'll get into him a little bit later I don't think there's anybody hotter in the country than him right now Will Dalton hit clean up with 10 home runs JJ Schwartz with his seven home runs hitting fifth Langworthy Blake Reese Keenan Bell and Nick Horvath at 294 and three home runs rounds out 
this Florida Gator lineup. Gators come in 21 and 5. They won four of their last five, nine of their last 11. Florida State's won two in a row and six of their last seven. So two teams that are playing some baseball at a real high level. On the mound for Florida State is Andrew Carp and Kevin O'Sullivan has seen him quite a bit. This is uh, it seems like every midweek yeah. game between these two teams. It's Carp on the mound, but Sully now is 11th year as a Florida head coach, and of course coming off that national championship just a few months ago. And there is Carp, the junior out of Winter Garden, Florida, getting the baseball tonight. He's already pitched against Florida this year, and and didn't throw great in that one. Really struggled against the Gators for Carp. It's one of the only ones he struggled. One of the only starts he struggled in this year. He's coming off a 10 strikeout performance against a really good UCF team a week ago. Stuff's pretty good. It can be into the low 90s. The one thing to watch with Carp is, is he pitching up with a purpose? So can he get Florida to go after that fastball that's just up and a little bit out of the zone? Because this is a big yard, especially out towards center field. Ground ball right back up the middle, and Deacon Lippett continues to swing an excellent bat. He started the year 5 for 31. Since last Wednesday, went 10 for 17 to increase that average up over 310 and gets another base knock there. Florida State defensively will look like this. It'll be Jackson Luke in left. Stephen Wells will get the call in center field, normally the right fielder. And Reese Alpert, a freshman, gets the start. In right field tonight, Mike Salvatore at shortstop, Nick Durr at second base on the corners. It's Drew, Mendor Drew Mendoza and Rhett Applin. And behind the plate, guy we've seen there for three years now, catching almost every game they play is Cal Raleigh. There's a strike to Nelson Maldonado. Junior from Tampa, 309 with four homers and 21 runs batted in. He's been solid in that two hole for Florida all year. He has. And Kevin O'Sullivan really likes him in that two hole. Uh, he can be a really high on base percentage guy. It's not quite as high as it was last year, but it's still close to 400. He had one of the biggest swings of the weekend last weekend for Florida. Broke a 3 3 tie on an 0-2 Matt Cronin fastball late in the ball game Florida would hang on win 5-4 and win the series on Sunday. That one misses off the plate. Carp as you mentioned pitched earlier this year against Florida and it was a 12-6 Gator victory over Florida State Carp went four and a third. Gave up eight hits and seven earned runs. Last season he had a great game against Florida struck out 11 Gators didn't allow a walk but they ended up losing one to nothing in that game a year ago but those were the numbers the first time around there was that home run that we talked about for Nelson Maldonado 3 3 tie in game three and whoever won game three was going to win the series 0 2 fastball and that's the one thing with Maldonado he can turn a fastball around elevated cleared everything out in left field gave Florida a 5 3 lead at that point they'd hang on to win 5 4 that one back up the middle this could be two Salvatore steps on the bag over to Applin and that'll be the old 6 3 double play. Don't get much easier than that, do they? Mm -mm. No, for Mike Salvatore going glove side, knows he has plenty of time, does not have to speed that throw up. So, two ground balls right off the bat for Andrew Carp. One, a single up the middle off the bat of Deacon Lippett, then erased that ground ball from Nelson Maldonado. The shift on for Jonathan India here early. Mike Salvatore, the shortstop, pushed all the way deep into the six hole. Nick Durr, the second baseman, playing directly behind a base. Well, that's because India is uh, literally at a at a clip that it's very few guys can get in at this level of baseball. In his 11 game hit streak, there's a second base on the bag. During this 11 game hit streak, he's hitting 583 with five homers and 12 runs batted in. He scored 13 runs. 
leads the conference in batting average and slugging percentage, ranks second in on-base percentage. I mean, it's just crazy what he's doing to the baseball. Yeah, and he just looks so comfortable at the plate. I mean, he, even if he makes an out, it just it seems like when Jonathan India steps in the box right now, there's a really high level of comfort. What I was most impressed with against Arkansas is he was spraying the ball over the field. Home run to right center, triple to right center, double down the left field line. So even though the shift was on there and India will walk, it's he's not a guy that that you can really circle and say he's going to hit it to the left side of the field the entire time. He's really grown with the ability to hit the ball the other way this year with authority. So the walk will take us to Will Dalton, the right fielder, who's having an outstanding season. Dalton at 308, 10 home runs. Now remember, he was hitting leadoff for most of those. Yeah. There's a strike to Will. This lineup just seems to flow better with Dalton down in the three, four, five spot. And you get Deacon Lippitt up top. We saw him a week, week and a half ago lead a game off against South Carolina, make it one nothing with one swing. He can do that. There was real power to the pull side. Nine of his ten home runs were in that leadoff spot, but that home run you talked about at South Carolina, it one hopped out of the stadium. Feel no doubter. It is a true right field arm too. And he's not afraid to throw it around the yard. If he's got a chance you, you'll see Dalton turn one loose later on tonight. Jonathan Indy over there on first base almost had too good of a jump right there. I know you pointed right away like <laughs> he thought he yeah. had a read. He thought he had a, and he did have a read on Andrew Carp. But took that first step to second base a little bit early, then then shut everything down. Runner goes. Raleigh's throw. Not in time. Third stolen base of the year for Jonathan India. Well, it may have been a spot where they just put India on his own right there. The last one didn't like his jump, shut it down, made the right decision here, even after a different look from Andrew Carp. So he was a lot slower, a lot more deliberate before he went towards home plate right there to make sure that India did not have the same jump that he did the pitch before. But the jump was plenty good. Throw a little bit high from Cal Raleigh. And India able to slide in there with his third stolen base of the year. Out to short. Salvatore, long throw, makes it. And they retire Will Dalton. So... The walk goes for not Gators leave a runner. We have played one here in Jacksonville between fifth ranked Florida State second ranked Florida. Anna, do you have those plans? Yes. I just wanted to show you something I've been working. James R. And Associates, Anna speaking. James Art Associates, Anna. Baker Architects, this is Anna Baker. This is what our version of financial planning looks like. Tomorrow is important, but you're ready to bet on yourself today. Spend your life living. Find an advisor at NorthwesternMutual.com. Exhilarating, thrilling, electrifying. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about my style of racing. I'm talking about the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event. Check out the Clarity Plug-In Hybrid. You can do your day-to-day -day driving using only electric. Going on a road trip, there's gas to back you up. It's got a 340-mile combined range rating. And, best of all, it is way easier to use than my company car. The Honda Dream Garage Spring Event is on now. You can get a great deal on the Clarity Plug-In Hybrid at KBB.com Best Buy for 2018. Standing so far, great start for Georgia. Sweep South Carolina that last weekend. Vanderbilt wants two out of three from LSU. 
Right side Ole Miss 4 and 2, Arkansas 4 and 2, and that's after Arkansas swept Kentucky to start the season. Georgia, the one surprise of that group, I think, so far. Won two out of three at Alabama, then swept South Carolina last weekend for a five and one start. They'll get the Aggies this weekend coming to Athens. Well, here's Drew Mendoza. Mendoza had a 16 game hitting streak in his 28 game streak of reaching base in Sunday at North Carolina, but regardless, still hitting 413 to lead the ACC. Actually, third in the ACC. Now he was tops heading into the weekend. Ground ball out to Reese. He'll make the play. And that'll be the first out of the inning. Mr. Mendoza is a pretty good baseball player now. And this the one thing that they have talked about defensively is that maybe the error numbers are a little bit not as indicative of, of the talent that there is over at third base. But he's a big kid. The power is going to continue to come. Drew Mendoza, one of these kids in this Florida State lineup that you really have to be excited about the future. Just a sophomore. Reese Albert will step in. Looks at ball one and look at hammers the second pitch he sees into the seats. Got a sellout here tonight. Starting to look like it. In fact, they put a thousand standing room only tickets on the market just a few days ago. Sold those out too. Should have over 10,000 here tonight when everybody shows up on what really is a great night for this matchup. One game in Gainesville, one in Tallahassee, one here in Jacksonville this year. One and two the count. Albert out in right field. Due to the injury to J.C. Flowers suffered at North Carolina on Sunday. They really like this youngster. Pretty good change up there. Jack left with yard speed's very good. You can see it go down and away. He had thrown it earlier in the bat to Reese Albert, had him swing through, and then this time comes back to finish him off right there. Started over the middle of the plate, the natural action, and that takes it out and away from a left hander. And the velocity difference is one he just couldn't hold up on. 1 0 on Stephen Wells. Left, which works at a good pace. He's pretty much a catch and throw type guy. That one's up and in. It's three and one now with two down. Make it full of three and two. Into shallow center field, long run for Horvat, but he will make the catch. He broke back about two steps before realizing he better get on his horse. He did just that. And that'll do it for Florida State in their half of the seconds. When we come back, J.J. Schwartz grabs a bat. He of the seven home runs and 21 runs batted in. I think heroic deeds were all conceived in the open air. I think whatever I shall meet on the road, I shall like. And whoever beholds me shall like me. I think whoever I see must be happy.
Boy, it is a perfect night for some baseball. Florida State and Florida coming your way. Bottom of the second inning. And we are scoreless. Gators had one hit in their half of the first. And here's J.J. Schwartz coming to the plate. J.J. looks at a first pitch strike. 290 on the year. Seven homers and 21 runs batted in for the senior out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. We're in the seed this year. Came back for a senior season. Sully said he's got the makeup of the guy I want leading this team. First guy that's ever wore that C. Kevin O'Sullivan has never had a, a captain that'll wear it on his chest in his time at Florida. But when you get a guy like J.J. Schwartz back for his senior year, it makes all the sense in the world. Clearly, he's seen everything in this program. He saw everything in the bat, too. Yes. <laughs> Slider for strike one, fastball for strike two, and a... Good morning, good afternoon, good night right there. Quick first out of the inning for Andrew Carpers. Look pretty sharp so far. Yeah, real simple mechanics. That slider is not a huge break. Slider doesn't need to be. Straight out of his hand, it's for a hitter to pick up when he's throwing it in the right spot. That one's popped up down the left field line and into the spectators. Boy, it's starting to fill up nicely in here. It was, oh, uh, it's, it's got a nice little vibe, a nice little buzz in may, this ballpark. May get a nice bit chippy at some point in here too, because looks like about a 50-50 split. There's a lot of blue, a lot of Knowles fans here. I love that they do this, and it's a great setting. Gator ball just off in the distance, home to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Literally just. Over the right field fence. Austin Langworthy. We'll worry about that in a moment. Right now he's trying to deal with Carp. And there it is off of the distance. Well, that thing has gone through so many renovations. They have got it uh, nice and pristine for the Jaguars. Had a nice little run of things last year. That's it. Hey, Sunday, we'll have the final game of the three game series between eighth ranked Vanderbilt and second ranked Florida from a Keaton Stadium in Gainesville. That's noon Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. And that'll be Dynamite Baseball. Two teams certainly chasing an SEC championship and return trip to Omaha as well. You got a chance to see that Vandy team last week. Young offensively. At times, young in the mound, Mason Hickman. Through game three and through a gem. What'd you do an hour and 35 minute baseball game the last day you were there? 131. Wow. Hour and 31. Yeah. One nothing Seven games, game. but still. Yeah. Uh, Mikhail Hilliard for LSU, another young right hander. Great. Uh, he was fantastic as well. But Vanderbilt's a very young team, I think, but they, they brought in 17 freshmen, the number one recruited class in the country, and five of them have already started, um, not counting pitchers, and, and they're active. They're Why involved. You count pitchers, because you just don't. Come on, man. You don't. Pitchers, you don't. Feelings. You don't. No, they don't. Yeah. The ones I know don't. <laughs> <laughs> Blake Reese with a couple of home runs to his credit, taking on some Seminoles that he grew up around, a Tallahassee native. One and two the count. You know, Florida State has been a team that's had a tough time kind of keeping it between the lines. Last weekend, they issued 26 walks. Usually it's Florida State that is walking that much right. over the course of the weekend, and they still won the series. Took two out of three from North Carolina. Prior to that weekend, they were giving up just about three and a half walks per game, and Last week, 26 walks and 26 innings. The three weekend starters gave up 16 of those walks. But as you mentioned, it's a testament to the, to the team mentality to win two of three on the road. Seminoles have Louisville coming to town this week. Two pretty good matchups now. Louisville, Florida State. Vanderbilt, Florida. Carp. Called strike, and that will do it. That'll send Blake Reese back to the dugout. He's not afraid to go inside. No, and I think it surprised Blake Reese. 
You see guys gap on a fastball like that. So really just kind of start to move that body back. Clearly they weren't looking for it in there. And I'm not sure that Cal Raleigh was looking for it in there. Yeah. Set up on the outside part of the plate. Glove kind of has to move a little bit over. But it worked well for Andrew Karp. Second strikeout of the game. Second of the inning. Now it's Keenan Bell. 228 on the year. The first baseman. He's gone yard three times and been struggling. But Kevin O'Sullivan believes he's seen enough lately to think he's about to get out of this little mini slump if you will he's been barreling up some balls of late and feels pretty confident he can get things straightened out Keenan Bell the Jacksonville native Kevin O'Sullivan saying you know what maybe get him at home get a little confidence working in this ballpark it can carry over Brady Smith started a game at first base this weekend. Bell did not start every game for Florida against Arkansas. Power potential, absolutely there. It's the consistency that just hasn't been yet. Bell just three of 16 in six conference or five conference games. He has definitely got some power in that bat. Florida's won 11 of 12 against Florida State, including six in a row. Hard to believe. These two teams are so evenly matched, it seems like, every year. The Gators have just had Florida State's number of late. I'm talking to Mike Martin this week about this game, you know, he said he was going to throw Andrew Carp and I said, well, will you get some arms in there? Maybe that needs some midweek action. He stopped me. And he's like, Dave, um, let me just tell you this. We're going to play to win. And if that means Carp has to go nine innings, that's what we'll do. Well, and what Carp has done for them is, is really be a true midweek starter. So you can't stretch him out. Got him look nasty on that pitch right there. Keenan Bell goes down swinging. So three strikeouts that inning for one Andrew Carp. Three strikeouts, a walk in the middle of it. But for Andrew Carp, looks pretty comfortable out there so far tonight. Fastball's been good. The ability to throw the slider, that looked like a changeup that just kind of went away off from Keenan Bell. We got two scoreless on a great night at Jacksonville. Welcome back to the baseball grounds of Jacksonville. Florida State and Florida scoreless as we go to the top of the third. Just one hit on the board recorded by Florida back in the first inning. Off the bat of Deacon Lippett to start game. But then he was uh, quickly retired as Maldonado hit into a 6-3 double play. Zach left, which the freshman right-hander working uh, for the Gators against Rafael Bornegal. First game in this ballpark for the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. I've been waiting to say that one. Come to play in uh, the Southern League. They're part of the Southern League, they, which starts actually April 5th, but the first home game here is not till April 11th when they'll take on the Mobile, uh, Mobile Bay Bears. How about that? The Bay Bears and the Jumbo Shrimp. I played the Bay Bears once. It was a long time ago now, but it was about 194 degrees in Mobile. <laughs> it's not hot and humid down in Mobile, is it? August. Stay hot. 
The jumbo shrimp are part of the Marlins system. Tenth year they've been with the Marlins. That one's lifted in the air. Down the line and left. Langworthy. Boy, that just missed getting out of here. The wind is blowing from right to left. And that got up in the wind, folks, and it just kept going and going and going. I tell you what, off the bat, I thought there was a routine fly ball to left field. And for Rafael Bornegal, who only has one home run this year, he just about got his second. He missed it by just a few feet. You could see Langworthy. I think it surprised him how far this ball, A, traveled, but B, how much the wind took it into foul territory. Four feet foul, or it'd be one nothing Seminoles right now. Bornegal. How often do you see that? The long foul, and then a strikeout to follow. What out here in the third? Take a look at our USA Today coaches poll, the top 10, Oregon State. A little chink in the armor. They lost one this weekend. Yeah, well, they think it. <laughs> get 20 Still didn't lose a series. That no. doesn't happen. There are your boys right there. The Cardinal hanging yep. tough, 17-2. Uh, and two. Stanford swept SC. Ole Miss had another good weekend. Won two out of three at Texas A&M. On a weekend where Ryan Rollison, their staff ace, did not throw great. And still, Ole Miss came back to beat a really good A&M team who's now lost their first two series. Mike Salvatore, the junior, hitting ninth. Lifts that one in the air, down the line and right. Here comes Dalton on the run. He'll make the catch, and that'll be out number two. Just saw Jonathan India come charging in. He thought it was second, third out of the inning. <laughs> He'll jog back, back to third. Yeah. For Stanford, swept SC last weekend. A little different, a uh, little different look for the Cardinal this year. Power arms all weekend. Tristan Beck, Chris Bubich, Eric Miller on Sunday throw 95 from the left side. Arkansas, even though they lost the series last weekend, that's that has the look of an Omaha team. That's for sure. NC State sneaking in the top 10 as well. NC State with a great start in the ACC. Brent Kenneman. Leading the league in home runs right now from NC State with 12. Nick Dirt, top of the lineup. He grounded out his first time and lifts that one out to right. Dalton getting a workout here in the third, makes the catch, and that'll do it for Florida State. So we'll head to the bottom of the third inning. Still scoreless here at the baseball grounds of Jacksonville. Hey, Google. We're on the banks of the St. John's River in Jacksonville, Florida, the baseball grounds for a top five showdown. Florida State and Florida getting together here in Jacksonville for their annual showdown. They'll meet once in Tallahassee, once in Gainesville, but a full house here at the baseball grounds. Over 11,000 will be on hand when it's all said and done, and uh, a lot of garnet and gold. You can see so much blue and orange. Easy to tell. It's hard to, you're not going to get these two teams' colors. No. no, you will not confuse no. those two. This is a great setting, man. I, I, you know, we've got Auburn, Alabama plays where every year, the fourth game that they play. Ole Miss, Mississippi State plays in Pearl every year. Right. Um, I like these kind of midweek. Georgia is not a, obviously these two are in a different conference, but Georgia, Georgia Tech, Georgia, Georgia Tech play at SunTrust in Atlanta. They average over 20,000 a game every time they get together. Nick Horvath, 294. 
a senior out of Jupiter, Florida. Nick's out there in center field and a two-way guy, but he's having a hard time finding his way to the mound this year because a couple of things. A, there's some quality arms in that dugout, and he's also playing some great center field. I'd tell you one of the biggest differences Horvath goes swinging down here is offensively Nick Horvath has been a very different player than he's been the last few years. He was going to see the field defensively because he was just that good in center field especially when Florida had the lead late but now he's been a regular starter the entire season for Andrew Carr. No strikeouts in the first inning. He's had four cents struck out the side in the last inning got J.J. Schwartz swinging then a fastball on the inside part of the plate to Blake Reese and then the change up down and away to Keenan Bell. It's Nick Horvath swinging to start this. Well, these guys looking pretty comfortable early. Carp does have a couple of walks here tonight, but you know, he's had a pair of double digit strikeout games this season without a walk. And yeah, one was his last start against UCF. A good UCF team. He beat Florida twice and two times in a row, and Florida State beat him back to back last week. Well, what a luxury to be able to throw a guy like Carp out there on a midweek game. Because even though they're, clearly they're not conference games, you can use them over the course of the weekend if you need to, but they're big for RPI. You play Florida in a neutral setting like they are right now, wind goes a long ways from an RPI standpoint. What is that pitch he's throwing that's just kind of really diving slider. on Slider. He's and it's a real slider. It's short. You see some sliders. I was talking to Mike Bell, the pitching coach from Florida State before the ball game. He said, you know, he throws a real slider. Like you see more now, they're a little bit slurvy or they're a little yeah. bit bigger. His is tighter, it's shorter. Has good down action when he gets over the top of it. And so he can throw it to left handers and right handers. It doesn't always come back in towards the barrel. As it's straight downward movement, he can lip it swung right over the top of it. That's five of the last six hitters. The carp is faced. He struck out. Well, he has got that pitch working for sure. Two outs for Nelson Maldonado. Now, I know you weren't, you know, in your mind you were a great hitter. <laughs> Statistically, <laughs> not so much. Numbers would disagree with your mind. <laughs> this, just follow me. Where are we going here? <laughs> Just taking a shot at you okay. randomly. No. Neither team was able to take BP today on this field as that one's lifted to the right side. And we'll talk about that when we come back to the baseball grounds of Jacksonville. A really solid inning for Andrew Carp. We are scoreless through three. When we come back, number 11 is going to join us. Mike Martin will grab a headset. Stay with us. Right now, when you lease a Samsung Galaxy S9, you get another for your friend. That's two for one. And with Galaxy Forever, you can upgrade to the newest Galaxy every year. It's like pre-ordering for the future. Upgrades every year. Every year. Upgrades every year? Every year. Every year? Every year. Upgrades every year. Every year. Upgrades every year. Yes, every year. How come no one's getting this? Lease a Samsung Galaxy S9 and get a second on Sprint. And with Galaxy Forever, always have the newest Galaxy. NerdWallet.com knows that it can be hard to know. Uh... Sometimes options seem similar. Uh... And you don't want to wing it. Uh... But when it comes to credit cards, uh... you can breathe easy. NerdWallet has all the info you need in one place to help you find the lowest rate, most cash back, or sweetest perks. Nothing beats knowing. Find your next card today at NerdWallet.com. Well, we're back here at the baseball grounds of Jacksonville. Scoreless moved to the top of the fourth inning. Great crowd on hand. And uh, joining us down in that dugout is the legendary coach of the Seminoles, Mike Martin. And, uh, Coach, thanks for joining us. And first time we've had a chance to put this game on TV here in Jacksonville. Just kind of run us through your perspective of being here and what it's like. 
Dave, it's great for the city. It's great for the two universities to play in an environment like this. It's, I mean, it's Gators and Seminoles, and that's really all that needs to be said. <laughs> that's it. We like 10,000 here, too. You guys have battled some injuries now this year, and more so than, than most would. Kind of handicap your club and, and where you think you are right now. KP, we're battling. We, we, of course, lost our center fielder over the weekend. We've, we've got some adjustments to make, but the attitude and the competitiveness of our ball club will continue to surface. We've just got to believe and keep battling. Coach, before we let you go, I'm, I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot right here, and I know it's you don't like to look ahead, but obviously 12 victories away from a guy we talked about earlier today and Augie Garrido, the late Augie Garrido for the all-time uh, college baseball wins list. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you were speaking to us earlier today about what it means to you. Well, the main thing it means to me is the fact that if it happens, I want it to be Florida State in the same first two or three words because Florida State gave a young man that loved the university an opportunity to coach at a, at a program and, and an athletic department is a true family. We all care about each other. We have great camaraderie. We have a great AD, as I said, and our president is the best. You know, it's uh, you bring smiles to all of our faces. It's Every great. time. It's great to see you at the ballpark. I, I can't thank you enough for all you've done for me over the last 30 years, and it's uh, just great to see you. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Glad to be with you. Thank you, Levin. 1980 was his first year. Dick Hauser was the coach the year before. Dick Hauser gets a call in the dugout at Florida State. It's George Steinbrenner saying, I want you to manage the New York Yankees. That gave him a shot. It's worked out okay. He's won 40 games or more every season that he has been at Florida State. This is 39th year. He even had a stretch there. I think a 12 year run where they won 50 plus games. I mean, it, it, it's uh, with the, the numbers are just staggering. It, it's almost you think it's you're making them up when you start thinking about it. Of course, second currently in uh, career wins with 1964 and there's the 40 wins in every season you were talking about and 16 College World Series appearances, and there's there's one thing. It's the 16 CWS shots and no titles. What does it take? What will it take? It just it doesn't seem like they've had a lot of baseball luck when they get to Omaha, because Lord knows they've had plenty of teams that were the most talented when they showed up, or at least plenty talented to win it. But back last year, back in Omaha in 2017, they had not been in Omaha since 2012. Prior to that. You know, this is, we joke a lot with him, and he's just a great storyteller, but I asked him about his team, and you were standing there with yes, me right I now. I love this. And I, I said, Coach, does this team have the makeup of, because of, you've had some injuries, does it still have the makeup of being an Omaha team? And he says, Dave, when I coach a team that I don't think has the makeup of an Omaha team, that's when I step away. And he was, uh, there were no smiles. No. There were no, I mean, it was dead serious. And he thinks this team has it, and so far there's nothing to tell you that they don't. Popped up in foul territory. That'll get to the seats. That one's out of play, but I tell you what, one thing that I like, Jack Leftwich has been all around the plate tonight. He goes 3-0 count on Cal Riley right there. Mike Martin Jr. is the third base coach and runs this offense. Turned him loose. Because Riley can hit it into the river right now and make it one nothing. So even for a team that is very patient, and Florida State is very patient, for a guy standing at the plate that can change a ball game, he let him swing at 3-0. Now goes 3-0 to 3-2. Jack Leftwich just reared back through that fastball right by Raleigh. And that will do it. A one, two, three inning, and we are still scoreless. Leftwich has retired 10 straight now for Florida. When we come back, we'll talk with the head coach of the Florida Gators, Kevin O'Sullivan. I'm leaving the track behind, but I'm not standing still. And with GoDaddy, I've made my ideas real. I made my own way. Now it's time to make yours. Everything is working, working, just like it should. Take these cars with the 
Scoreless bottom of the fourth inning, fifth ranked Florida State, second ranked Florida. Bottom of the fourth inning from the baseball grounds here in Jacksonville, Florida. Down in the dugout, that man, Kevin O'Sullivan, puts the headset on, joins us right now. And uh, Sully, talk to us about the environment here. What, what is it about this game in Jacksonville that brings out this crowd? And what is it from your perspective that you enjoy? Well, I, we, we look forward to this game every year. It gives uh, both schools a chance to have their fans come out at a neutral site. And, um, you know, maybe some fans that live in this part of the state that have, you know, obviously don't have a chance to see us play every, you know, every week. So obviously, Jack left, which is, uh, I would say, looking pretty solid right now from our perspective. What is it from your perspective? Well, he's he's throwing his uh, secondary pitches for strikes. He you know, he worked back there, um, you know, back in the 3-0 count with uh, with Cal up there, a really good hitter. So. You know, I don't know how far we'll go with him. I think he's at 55 through four, but um, he's throwing the ball very well, but so is Carp. Sully, how about the growth of Jonathan India this year? What have you seen this year that, that maybe you didn't see as much of the last two? Well, I think he's just taking what they're giving him. I think he's using the whole field, and, you know, Kyle, you were there last week, and he yeah. hit a couple balls the other way. Uh, you know, one off the right center field wall and a home run the other way, too, the, the grand slam on Saturday. But uh, he's using the whole field and just got a, a much more mature approach, I think, at the plate. All right, Sully, thanks for joining us. We'll let you get back to work. All right, thanks, guys. Scoreless, bottom of the fourth. And speaking of Jonathan India, he steps into the batter's box, 16th in the country in batting average. Came in at 429 and stays there at this at bat after walking in the first inning. Sliders right there from Andrew Carp, and it's in an area for a right-handed hitter. You don't see him very often, so you see the reaction you just saw from Jonathan India. You think that ball's going to come all the way inside, and it stays right over the inside part of the plate. Carp's not really trying to throw it there, but when he has, it's worked. That's skied in left field. Luke comes in to make the catch. One down. Saturday will be in Knoxville at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium for the first game with a three game series between number six Georgia and number 10 Tennessee five o'clock Eastern four central right here on the SEC network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Seems like anytime there's a baseball or a softball it's a top 10 a matchup. top 10 teams. Yeah that's what happens when you got every team in the entire league that makes the NCAA tournament last year like happened in softball. That one is popped straight back and out of play. Will Dalton. What a find for Kevin O'Sullivan. He's put together now. You don't see too many kids come in from the junior college level and immediately hit for power. Will Dalton has obviously done that. Double digit home runs already. Has struggled a little bit against the stuff that spins. You throw him a fastball down in the zone, he's got a chance to hit it over the scoreboard. But the slider has been the one thing that's given Will Dalton some challenges this year. That one is roped down the line and left. That'll be extra bases perhaps as Luke comes up with it and gets it in. A stand-up double for Will Dalton, his seventh of the year and just the second hit of the game. And that's what he can do to a fastball. Saw a slider earlier in the bat. And Andrew Carp's Carp comes back with a fastball and really throw it right down the middle. And this is one probably lucky that it's not one nothing. Dalton gets out in front of it just a tick top spin liner to left field that there's no way Jackson Luke can cut off before it got out to the wall. So it's a one out double for Will Dalton with J.J. Schwartz coming up. And here's a the guy they'd love to get cranked up again. He was off to a pretty good start. But J.J. has kind of been mired in a little bit of a slump here since the beginning of SEC play. Plus his one at bat tonight. He's just three for his last 26 with 11 strikeouts. Out to third. Mendoza fields and fires. And that'll leave Dalton out at second base. Two down in the inning now. The left fielder, number 44, Austin Lenworthy. Boy, Mendoza's a guy we saw over there at third base that Mike Martin said, wait till you guys just see him out there. I mean, he's a 
He is a pro prospect third baseman with his physical size attributes. Obviously, he can swing. It's a big league body. I mean, it's it's a big league body. It's a big league move. When he's at home plate, it's one of the reasons why Mendoza was one of the highest drafted players to show up at college last year. To the right side, that'll get through. Albert comes up. Here's the throw home. Dalton try to get there first, and he does. Good work by Austin Langworthy right there, who has scuffled a little bit this year at the plate offensively. He gets a first pitch he can handle, gets it into right field. And Reese Albert, the right fielder, does a good job of charging this ball, cutting down the distance that it is between he and home plate, but just enough speed for Will Dalton. With two outs, you know he's going the minute that those hands move, ball's put in play, and the Gators are on the board. And 11 out to the mound. He makes all the visits for Florida State. He'll talk to Andrew Carp, who was cruising along until the double by Dalton got a soft roll to third and then a single through the right side. Think of the number of times that that man has made that walk. That's kind of scary. 39 years. And think of some of the, if you could just hear some of the discussions that have taken place out there during that time frame. I mean, it's a voice that I think at this point knows the time to come out and sue, knows the time to come down and maybe slow the game down, and knows the time when to come out and maybe see some things different, get some guys going. One of the greatest that our college game has ever seen right there. 1,964 wins in 39 seasons. Girls, Augie Guerrero's all-time win record by just 11 right now. We will have Florida State back on our air on ESPNU against... Boston College, April 21st from Fenway Park. Well, things got to go really well, but do. that could be a a night, right? That could potentially happen that weekend. Um, could potentially happen the following weekend against yeah. Miami. Ooh. In Tallahassee. Against the team that Mike Martin got his first career win against. Wouldn't that be some? It was neat to hear him talk about Augie today. And just his respect for Augie, and, and not the wins, but his respect for Augie as a man. Time that they had spent together in Wichita, Kansas in 1975. Did he say he, 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 he right was telling us a story, and about 10 seconds into it, he says, Ooh, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, 1975. It was the middle of summer. I think they were on the recruiting trail. He was not the head coach of Florida State yet. And Augie Guerrero told a story. and how he had felt bad because he felt like he had let one of Florida State's players down in the middle of the summer in Alaska and had not talked to him about some of the things that he thought would make him a better player. And, and Mike Martin's comment was, you know, I, I learned something that day just about the psychology of the job and, and working with players and not just the X's and O's. And Lord knows there, there's nobody that has ever done the psychology of this game better than Augie Garrido. You know, it seems like there's never enough time to finish the stories. Well, we talk about Augie Garrido and Mike Martin. There are plenty of stories. Out to left, and Jackson Luke makes the catch, and that'll do it. But Florida does strike first. They get the RBI single from Austin Langworthy, and Will Dalton touches home. It's one nothing, Florida. Sign in. Yesterday my life was filled with rain Sunny You smiled at me and really eased the pain You gave to me your all in all And now I feel ten feet tall Sunny, one so true I love you
Jake Bentley will lead the Gamecocks in 2018 on the gridiron, but things get started this weekend with a spring game coming up. Jake Bentley certainly is one of the better quarterbacks of the Southeastern Conference. What a job Will Muschamp did last year taking that team. I think this, you could almost say the surprise of the league getting him to a bowl game. There weren't a whole lot of expectations for the Gamecocks, but yet they found a way to win some big games. Clay Matvick will be joined by with uh, Gene Chizik and Matt Stinchcomb. Well, also, it's also be an interesting game in the fact that uh, a lot of our ESPN football analysts will be, at least for some of the game, the officials on the field, Jordan Rogers, Booger McFarland, Cole Kubelik, Ryan McGee. I like it. Ryan McGee's throwing the strike. Yeah, so. I know. I'm, I, yes. I, somebody needs to talk to Ryan. Yes. I saw a note the other day about Will Muschamp's offense is a lot quicker this spring. Yeah, they're really working on the run game, trying to get that in order. Just... Uh, just wasn't there when they needed it a year ago. And a point of emphasis here this spring. Matter of fact, when we were at Columbia, South Carolina last weekend for the Florida, South Carolina series, Will Muschamp was in the dugout talking baseball yeah. and good catching up with him. Ground ball out to second. Got him. Blake Reese. Came literally across the diamond to make the play. And Jack Leftwich kind of, he kind of whiffed on this one too. And I think it surprised him. I think he thought the ball was hit a little bit harder. It's right back at him. He had plenty of time, but can't quite get the glove on it. Then Reese is the only one that does have any chance. And that throw looked like it just, just was in enough time to beat Mendoza down that first base line. Jack Leftwich has not given up a hit yet, David. Has looked pretty comfortable out there on the mound. Four strikeouts, just one walk for the freshman. And he has just matched his longest outing of his young career. He did that in his second game against uh, Florida Atlantic back on February 20th. Struck out five in that one and walked one. And he is just, uh, I'll tell you what, he looks super sharp tonight. Yeah. Yeah, he... Uh, he looks pretty comfy out there right now. And this is the guy that when Kevin O'Sullivan talks about Jack Left, which is potentially being somebody that pushes into the weekend rotation. Because really, when you're at Florida, at least in the last six, seven, eight years, freshmen don't pitch on the weekend. It's just too deep. So you get a chance to throw midweek games, throw some on the weekend out of the bullpen, and then work your way into that weekend rotation. Left, which is one that they think fits really well in that rotation next year. You can see why tonight. Four and two-thirds, one walk, five strikeouts, has not given up a hit. It hasn't gone in too many deep counts either. With 3-0 against Cal Raleigh, came all the way back to strike him out for the last out of the fourth inning. Over two to one ball or strike to ball ratio right now, and he works another one, two, three inning so far through five. Face one over the minimum. Not bad. Works out okay. Yeah. Pretty good work by Jack Left, which bottom half of the fifth, Gators lead at one nothing. It's 99 cent kids nights at Golden Corral. Now kids eat and drink for just 99 cents under a buck. Woo! It's prime time for family time. Come on now, Golden Corral. Your choice rules. Life happens everywhere, like it never even happened, only happens here. The cleanup and restoration specialists at 1-800-SERVPRO and SERVPRO.com. These two teams met back on March 13th, and uh, Florida State got off to a quick 2-0 lead, but then the Gators came right back, bottom of the second, no runners on. Jonathan India, home run, made it two to one. In the bottom of the fifth, up seven to four. Nick Horvath doubles to score two. That made it nine to four. And at the end of the day, the Gators would beat the Seminoles in Gainesville, 12 to six. Well, you look at the comparison between these two teams, and uh, certainly a lot of similarities there. But the one thing missing from that Florida State ledger is that national championship. 
Look at that, though. 33 times these two have combined to go to the College World Series. 88 times they've been in the NCAA tournament. Every year. Every one of the 38 years that Mike Martin has been at Florida State, they have been in the postseason. That ball is hammered by Keenan Bell, but it is to the deep, deep center field area where it is 420 feet on a 10-foot wall out there. And I still don't know why people design ballparks like that. Yeah, that's that's a not not in this yard right now because that was a pretty good swing by Keenan Bell. Again, the Jacksonville native Kevin O'Sullivan liked the thought of getting into the lineup tonight, but you can shoot it out of a cannon to center field tonight. It's not getting out. And they call this the baseball grounds. It's more like polo grounds. Exactly. Is that what you were going to say? Exactly. Look at this. See how it led you into that? Humming right now. Oh, that's what happened. <laughs> <You did. laughs> yeah. Nick Horvath will step in. Nick struck out his first time up against Andrew Carp. Who's given up three hits in one run. He's walked a couple. Five strikeouts. That is gloved by Mendoza. Over to first and... That'll be the second out of the inning. Hey, Wednesday at 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 Central SEC Inside grants you an all-access pass to the SEC Gymnastics Championship for never-before-seen footage and sound from the coaches and gymnasts. SEC Inside right here on the SEC Network. And, of course, you can always catch it streaming live on the ESPN app. Mendoza over there at third base. Big frame on that young man. Boy, these guys, I, I don't know what they were like when you were playing. But they weren't growing them like this when I was in college. Mr. Mendoza's not, Mr. Mendoza's not a small kid. And it, it's, you got to realize he's 20 years old. I mean, it's, so if you're a professional team and you're looking at Mendoza next year when he's draft eligible, you're not thinking about what he's like at 21. You're thinking about what he's going to be like when he's 23, 24, 25, and you get the chance to get him up to the big league level. But that is a major league looking third base body right now. He had a tough time last year. Coach Martin was telling us they were doing some base running drills, and he got hit right in the jaw by a pitcher. Shattered his jaw. <laughs> then he got, then he said later on he comes back and a Gets hit in the face with a foul ball in the nose. It breaks his nose on a ground ball. Tough kid. The one they are very high about, which you don't have to watch him very long to understand why. Came in hitting 413, had a 16 game hit streak, and reached base in 28 straight until Sunday when that was snapped at North Carolina. Swing and a miss by Deacon Lippitt, and Carp gets the strikeout, his sixth of the game, and that'll do it for the Gators. Andrew Carp just about matching Jack Leftwich pitch for pitch tonight. Another strikeout for Carp in the fifth. He has been really in control most of the night, but it's the Gators that lead a one nothing. Concept. It's got a man cave. A whole gym. But the only problem, I don't live here. Because a real estate agent never showed us this place. Rule number 14. Wearing the correct attire. Opens doors. We move to the sixth inning, a 1-0 Florida lead. Number five versus number two in the country. Great midweek game for you. In Jacksonville, Florida, Dave Neal alongside Kyle Peterson. Glad you could join us on what is a gorgeous night. Temperature at 72 degrees. And that is the first hit of the evening for the Florida State Seminoles. And give it to Rafael Bornegal, the eight-hole hitter. Rafael Bornegal just missed a home run his first time up. Went foul by about three or four feet down the left field line. This time breaks up the no-hitter here in the sixth. Fastball shot into right field for a clean single. He had retired 13 straight until that base hit. 
Now he'll face Mike Salvatore. The plan for Jack Leftwich was three or four innings tonight, but he's been so efficient, just 65 pitches coming into this inning that they sent him back out there for the sixth. Snap throw back to first and Warnagal back safely. Kevin O'Sullivan out to the mound. Just the third 2 0 count tonight for Leftwich as you look at that pitch count. And that is, uh, I would say, the efficient evening. Yeah, I mean, I think if you can average 13 pitches or more in an inning, that is, a, or th excuse me, 13 pitches or less in an inning, that is, that is very efficient. Leftwich has been able to do it. In fact, he did it exactly on the number coming into it. Five strikeouts. Just one walk for the freshman Jack Leftwich tonight, who really has shown all three pitches. The ability to elevate the fastball that he can run into the mid 90s. The changeup has been good when he's had to use it against left handers, and the slider's been solid. It's why the numbers are what they are. One hit allowed now into the sixth inning, and the outs have really been spread out four fly outs, six ground outs, and five strikeouts. Now we're bringing the trainer on. I'm not quite sure why. Kevin O'Sullivan went out, walked back. Now he's making his way back out with the trainer who's got. A towel in the hand, which sometimes can mean a blister that might have popped or a nail that might have got into your finger a little bit. And yeah, they're going to go ahead and make the change. Well, if you're Jack left, which. Well, he's not leaving or is he just going to wait? Yeah, he's going to wait. OK, I like it. Sully heads back to the dugout and left his pitcher out there. So Jordan Butler grabbing the baseball coming in for the bullpen. See if you can see anything KP. All right. To me it looked like kind of the reaction out there looked like it was probably a blister. There's no reason to push that at this point. So the freshman left hander Jordan Butler on Jack left Jack left which leaves after five strong innings gave up just one hit. something incredible. Capital One has partnered with Hotels.com to give venture card holders 10 miles on every dollar they spend at thousands of hotels. All you have to do is pay with this at Hotels.com slash venture. 10 miles per dollar? That is incredible. I have the chills. Because you're so excited. Because ice is cold. And because of all those miles. Obviously. What's in your wallet? I'm not sure. What's in your wallet? <sighs> So left which leaves after 69 pitches 46 of those were strikes no more than 15 pitches in any one inning but he left what, what, what we think could be a blister issue on his hand and he turns it over to the left hander Jordan Butler who has in his last couple of weekends coming out of the bullpen for Florida looked pretty good but left which what a night huh. Yeah it was and I think this is a situation if it's towards the end of the season you probably leave him in How about that. How about that all the way around too? Jonathan India gets it started on a ball that was hit really hard off the bat of Mike Salvatore. Good feed to second base. Not a great throw, but Keenan Bell picks him up over there. This is what the freshman Jordan Butler has been able to do the last few weekends because he has come in in rough situations. In fact, every other situation was rougher than this. Got him out of a jam at South Carolina. And then this weekend against Arkansas did the exact same thing here. The second pitch that he throws is good for two outs and a 5-4-3 double play. And the first pitch to the leadoff man Nick Durr is in there for a strike. Durr with a grand slam at North Carolina. A big blow getting some separation between the Tar Heels on the final game of that series. Matter of fact the Seminoles went back to back. Durr with the grand slam. Then Luke came right behind him and hit another one out.
Two and two the counts. Butler pinched against uh, pitched against Florida State in their first meeting went two and two thirds gave up five hits that one smoked in the seats heads up. Speaking of hitting it hard this was the scene in Chapel Hill on Sunday. Take a look at this swing by Nick Durr. Looks like he popped it up. But it kept going. There's not a lot of movement with that front foot either. We've got backspin out to left field in a game that Florida State had to win to win the series. They would take two out of three in Chapel Hill. And freshman Jordan Butler starting to feel pretty comfortable when he comes into this ball game out of the bullpen. Rolls a 5-4-3 double play that gets a weak ground ball back to him off the bat of Nick Durr. It's one nothing Gators to the bottom of six in Jacksonville. How do you win it, business? Stay at La Quinta, where we're changing with contemporary makeovers. Then use the ultimate power handshake, the upper hander, with a double palm grab. Who has the upper hand now? Start winning today. Book now at LQ.com. These are the top nine reasons to shop Building 9. Friendly service, luxury vinyl tile, three lines of kitchen and bathroom cabinets in stock, composite decking. 42,000 square feet packed with bargains. 60,000 square feet of flooring in stock. Schrock cabinets. Silver line by Anderson. The number one reason to shop Building 9? We're 30 minutes from everywhere. So hurry into one of our two great locally owned Building 9 locations in Medina and Maslin or log on to building9.biz. Hey, Sunday we'll have the final game of the three-game series between eighth-ranked Vanderbilt and second-ranked Florida from McKeithen Stadium in Gainesville. That's coming your way noon Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. That game will perhaps go a ways in determining who will win an SEC championship. Two of the best teams in the conference this year going toe-to-toe -to -toe down in Gainesville this weekend. Nelson Maldonado will lead things off for Florida. It's this one high in the air to left. Jackson Luke shy of the track will make the catch one down. Boy, the conference is going to be a wild ride in the league this year. There are so many good teams. Six in the top 11. Six in the top 11, nine in the top 25, and the most recent to enter the top 25 is Georgia. Started five and one in the league. Really has had a great season, but for a four-game stretch. College of Charleston swept them over the course of the weekend. They lost four straight. Besides that, Georgia's been really consistent all season. Two out of three at Alabama, and then swept South Carolina last weekend for Auburn. Dropped five spots to number 11. They did win one of three against Kentucky in that series. Won two out of three against Texas A&M the opening weekend of SEC. Jonathan India. Boy, he takes a big cut at it. Yeah, he missed one there. Yeah. He missed a slider that hung right in the middle of the zone. You can kind of see the reaction from him right after. One thing I really like about India right now, one, there's not a lot of moving parts. Top half is really quiet, gets into that load, gets ready to go. The other is he doesn't get out of the box. I mean, after every pitch, he's not moving. Just looks so comfortable and ready to hit right now. And there you go. That's why that's been happening a lot. A 12-game hitting streak for Jonathan India. And during that streak, he is now 22 of 38 with five homers and 12 runs batted in. So one of the things that India has continued to do a little bit more is watch that front side. So that front foot comes all the way up, kind of triggers a swing. But he has that little trigger motion with the top half you see some of the best hitters in the big leagues doing right now where well, those hands will twitch a little bit right before the ball comes in gives a little bit more whip in the swing but the timing on everything right now is is just so much in sync for India saw another breaking ball right there just fired it out to center field over the last 12 games he's now at a 579 clip decent that'll work right Got to get you, I get you some playing time, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> May see his name in the lineup again this weekend. We'll see. Will Dalton. Did he go? No, he did not.
Look at 1 0 changeup, and we haven't seen Andrew Carp throw too many changeups to right handed hitters right there. Just the second 2 0 count of the night for Andrew Carp. Runner goes, that ball's hit to short. They won't be able to get the out at second. Long throw for Salvatore, but he gets it done, and Will Dalton is retired. Well, the action on the base pass kept him out of a double play because that ball's hit hard enough. It's right at Salvatore. He took it off one hop. I think that would have been a pretty easy 6 4 3 double play. But Jonathan India, who already has one stolen base today, was off and running on the pitch. He must have a pretty good read on Andrew Carp right now because he stole a base when he walked in the first inning. That time was off and run, and then it kept Florida out of the double play. And here comes J.J. Schwartz. His average down to 284. Still with seven home runs and 21 runs batted in. What? Fastball had a little giddy up on it. And Schwartz is not going to get a whole lot of fastballs just above the knees, and he missed that one. That one has popped up left side. Salvatore says he has it, and he does. So the single from Jonathan India keeps his hit streak alive. The Gators still lead one and nothing after six. I think J.J. Schwartz thought maybe he should have got this one. Slider hung up in the zone. A little spike of the bat right there, but it's still a one nothing Gator lead. Hey, you ever talk to anybody about your money? Yeah, I got some financial guidance a while ago. How'd that go? He kept spelling my name with an I. But it's Brian with a Y. Yeah, since birth. Oh, that drives me crazy. Yes. It's on all your email. Yes. They should know this. Yeah. The guy was my brother-in-law. That's ridiculous. <laughs> well, I happen to know some people. Do they listen? What? <laughs> They're amazing listeners. Nice. Guidance from professionals who take their time to get to know you. The lower cake. Woo, this is fun. Yes, we are coming out of a three-layer cake. Ooh, for hosting this beautiful bridal shower for your friend, you deserve the sweet reward of a diet Dr. Pepper. Mmm. That is sweet. Is that the entertainment? Yeah! Did someone call the cops? No. Should I go? Yes. But leave the boom box. Die, Dr. Pepper. It's the sweet one. Great night for some college baseball. And of course, it's a top five matchup. Second ranked Florida out of the SEC and fifth ranked Florida State out of the SEC. 14 teams from those two leagues represent, are represented in the top 25 this week. When they're at, I think it was two years ago, I think at one point there was like 16 or 17. Between the between, ACC yeah. and the SEC, yeah, I think you're right. Two heavyweights going at it. Tonight from the baseball grounds of Jacksonville on the banks of the St. John's River as we move to the seventh inning. Jackson Luke will lead things off and he did go. Jordan Butler just a freshman out of Tampa Florida. That's a nasty breaking ball right there coming in on your hands, huh? Yeah, they're pretty excited about this kid. He'll give you a little John Franco look. Kind of falling off from the left side. Turn back the clock about 20 years on you, Dave Neal. I like that, though. As a Braves fan, I was not into John Franco very much. But nice play there. But the one thing that Jordan Butler will do is he can field his position as, as well as any pitcher that Florida has. He could play some first base. Offensively, they, they like the upside of this kid as, as potentially being a two-way player. But a much easier play for Butler right there than Reese coming in and charging it. If he can glove it, he's got more time to take a few steps over, flip it over to Keenan Bell. That's four outs in three hitters face so far. He rolled a double play when he came in. 
he will be for the balance of this season. Main left handed option for Kevin O'Sullivan out of this bullpen and it just gives you more tools to work with. He could be a lefty lefty matchup guy. The slider really plays against left handers but because of the change up Butler's a guy that you can leave in to face righties and lefties. Pitching in this environment doesn't seem to bother him at all. Being just a freshman this time a year ago, pitching in high school in front of 100 people, maybe. No, I mean, we've seen over the last three weekends when he comes into a big spot. I mean, in South Carolina, comes in, gets him out of a jam and a place that can get pretty loud. Gets one of the best offenses in the country last weekend against Arkansas. Comes in. And Gets floored out of a jam. And while it wasn't a jam in this situation, he's got 10 or 11,000 in the stands. That'll get your blood pumping. Applin goes down swinging. That's just a tough lefty lefty matchup right there. I, it's the one thing right now with Butler's, if he gets ahead against a left hander, the ability to go to the slider is just hard to keep that front shoulder all the way in there. I mean, it starts and it looks like a strike when it comes out of his hand. But the break of that pitch, it has a little bit of tilt. It's going down in the zone, but it's really moving away from the barrel of a left handed hitter. The other thing is, he's got a pretty high aptitude out there on the mound. I mean, he's he's got a, a very good idea of what he wants to do. Seems like he's comfortable throwing the slider in any count. That time he comes back with a 1 1 count. So it's it's far from predictable for a young pitcher. That ball's hit pretty well, but once again into the cavernous area of center field, and that is where Nick Horvath will make the catch. Butler making it look easy. One, two, three inning. Head to the bottom of the seventh. It's one-nothing Florida. Well, we haven't had a whole lot of scoring, but what we have had, let's show you how it went down right now with Jonathan India, or excuse me, Will Dalton doubles back in the fourth inning, and then it was a single by Austin Langworthy that would drive him in, and that would be the only That's run it. of the game. That's it, and that happened in the fourth. That's it, and for Florida pitchers tonight, they faced one over the minimum through the first seven innings. Seven scoreless, the only hit was a Rafael Bornegal single to right field. He was a race down a double play. Been a well pitched game on both sides, but the difference was one swing by this guy, that RBI single by Austin Langworthy back in the fourth. Carp has been very impressive. There's a one hopper out to a second baseman, Nick Durr, and Langworthy is retired. Carp, the most pitches he's thrown in an inning is 17. He did it twice in the first and the second inning. He had a nine pitch fifth, a 12 pitch sixth. He's up to 80 pitches on the night. He has been really effective. He's been great. I mean, 17 in each of the first to the second. Really, the main reason there was just because he walked a guy in each inning. But besides that, Andrew Carp has not walked anybody after the first two innings. Has six strikeouts. The only blemish, one out double to Will Dalton, who came around to score later in the fourth. That ball's hit pretty well to right field off the bat of Blake Reese, but it'll die shy of the track. That'll be out number two. Tell you what, if you're an offensive player in the Miami Marlins organization, this is not exactly the place you want to come to. Uh, no. To get your hitting ego up, that's for sure, because it is not easy to hit it out of this joint. Down the left field line, we already saw that it'll fly, but. And in the gaps and out towards center field. It is a graveyard. 420. 420 to center field with a 10 foot wall. Yeah, this is the one where you're just fine if you skip double A. And that one will hit just to the right side of that foul line off the bat of Keenan Bell. But this is the home to the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. And they will have their home opener on April 11th. Against the Mobile Bay Bears. 
Bay Bears, part of the Los Angeles Angels. It's a great ballpark. Jumbo shrimp right there. There it is. You got to get you a hat. Now that you've been here, you're official. I promoted their opening game enough. I should get some tickets <laughs> to the opening game. Right? Lord knows you're not going <laughs> to buy one. <laughs> This is the, they've actually they were working on this field right up until we got started today. They haven't had a game in here or anything in a while. So they're just trying to get things right. Not just for this game but for. Their opener on April 11th. Ground ball over the first base. That'll be an easy out as Applet steps on the back. How about a seven pitch inning for Mr. Andrew Carp. The baseball grounds of Jacksonville. Number five Florida State number two Florida. What you would expect a one nothing game. Move to the eighth inning. Drew Mendoza steps in against Jordan Butler. The third best hitter. In the ACC by average right now the 27th best hitter in all of college baseball by average right now. Sitting 404 and he's gone 0 for his last six if you go back to Sunday and he's still hitting 404. Lefty lefty matchup here. The sophomore Mendoza the freshman Butler. That one just missed inside. Wow. That one looked pretty good. Again, it wasn't exactly where Butler wanted to throw it. He was trying to throw it a little bit further out to Mendoza. Didn't get the call, then the fastball misses to go 3 1. That's in there for a strike. Michael Byrne up and throwing the Florida bullpen. Byrne went three and two thirds against Arkansas on Sunday. Got the win in that. Gave up his first earned run of the season. A gun 26 and two thirds scoreless in a string that stretched to last year before that run allowed. And dropped in foul territory. Austin Langworthy just at the last moment took his eye off it. Simple as that. Yeah, he had to go a long ways, and I think he peeked too to see where Deacon Lippett was because for a minute it looked like Lippett was going to make the play down the left field line. It was in foul territory. But just flat dropped that one. Well, you don't want to give this guy an no. extra swing, and they just did. Let's see how Butler handles that. That should have been out number one of the inning. And another 3 2 pitch coming up. Pretty good confidence in the slider. 3 2 slider after that ball that was flared down the left field line foul. And a good job by Mendoza to stay alive. Check swing. Did he go? No swing. And that'll be a walk for Mendoza. That was a nine pitch at bat for Drew Mendoza. Coming up to the plate is Reese Albert, the freshman who's in the lineup today be because of an injury that occurred on Sunday to J.C. Flowers. And watch J.C. running the bases. Took a knee right to his jaw, would fracture his jaw, cut his lip right down the middle, 
was basically knocked out, stayed overnight in Chapel Hill, came back to Tallahassee on Monday, met with the doctors. Mike Martin telling us today that the uh, young man will have surgery and they'll wire that jaw shut for a while. Could be out six to eight weeks, maybe, give or take a week on the front or back end. You just don't know, but that would basically put it at a, at a regional if things go well for him to come back. The, the guy that started every, almost all but one game at center field this year. Um, Big loss for this team, but just another one of those injuries they're having to deal with. Yeah, big loss and a scary deal. I mean, just just going in, trying to break up a, a, a double play, and at the end of the end of that play, just trying to get out of the way. I mean, there was there was nothing flagrant about it. It's just two guys trying to make plays. But Mike Martin talked about it today when he got out there. I mean, it was you could see from the from the video. Um, I mean, he took a knee straight to the jaw. He actually, JC actually showed up here before the game today. Yeah. He's from the area here and wanted to come see this game before he had surgery tomorrow. Jordan Butler giving way to Michael Byrne as the Gators lead it one to nothing. Another nice effort for Mr. Butler. We'll update the change when we come back. Well, Sully knows the importance of this game as he goes and gets his big horse out of the bullpen. Michael Byrne, who just worked just uh, two days ago, Sunday yeah. in Gainesville, and threw a lot of pitches for a reliever. But this is a guy that he says just has a calm heartbeat. Nothing seems to bother him. There's not. I mean, in the biggest moments, Michael Byrne seems to be just as comfortable as, as he would be with nobody on base. Led the country last year with 19 saves. This year, just a .44 ERA. Oh, he comes to? in and the whole pace of everything just kind of slows down. Was we'll he up to 26, 28 innings of scoreless baseball until Sunday? 26 and a third. Yeah. 26 and a third. He had run a scoreless inning streak that went all the way back to before the College World Series of last year. Jared Heron, by the way, steps in to, to hit against Michael Byrne as he replaces Reese Alpert. Mendoza over at first after walking on a nine pitch at bat. It's have been uh, few and far between here just a total of five one for the Seminoles four for the Gators. And these are two very good hitting baseball teams. They are. They absolutely are. Especially coming after weekends where they scored a bunch of runs. Florida put 17 on Arkansas in game two of that series. Popped him up. Blake Reese backpedals, makes the catch, one down. Hey, Sunday we'll have the final game of what should be an outstanding series down in Gainesville between eighth ranked Vanderbilt, second ranked Florida, coming your way from McKeithen Stadium. That'll be the final game of that three game set, noon Eastern, right here on the SEC Network. And of course, you can always catch that on the ESPN app. Should be some great crowds down in Gainesville. How about this run? Three in a row against Arkansas, who came in ranked number four to Gainesville last weekend. You play a top five Florida State team tonight, then you get a top ten Vanderbilt team coming in over the course of this coming weekend. That's not a bad seven game stretch. And at the same thing, we were talking to Florida State. They had two against UCF. Yep. Right? Got both those. They won both of them. Then they had to Chapel Hill. Got two out of three. The Gators. Yeah. And then they get the game. Then you get Louisville. You get Louisville. Uh, it's just that crazy time of the year. But I think after this two and a half, three week stretch, I think we'll know a lot about these teams that we we know a lot about them already. But I think there will be a lot explained about, I think, the potential of these teams in terms of Omaha bound or not.
So Wells will head back to the dugout. Byrne comes in, gets the strikeout, out number two of the inning. I think the toughest thing and what makes Michael Burns so good is the ability to throw all three at any count. And he'll throw the slider and hitters count. So 2 1 1 0 counts. He'll throw the slider to get back into the bat. And then he can surprise you with this one. He'll get up 91, maybe 92. So it's not like he's a flamethrower when he's out there. But. He's fearless with the fastball, especially in two strike counts. And a lot of times you'll see that reaction to where guys aren't ready for the fastball and just can't pull the trigger. Bornegal a little hesitant on that swing. And it's 0 and 1. He projects as a starter at the next level if you want him to because of the three pitches. You could throw him out there in a starter's role when he gets into pro ball. And I honestly think he's a guy that you can move as fast as you want when he gets into professional baseball. Chopper foul. It'll be 0 and 2. Because I don't know what else you really need to teach him. He controls three as he ability to throw the fastball on both sides of the plate. And ultimately, when you get a guy like Byrne into a professional system, when he is that advanced, you can push him quick and really see how far the stuff can take him. I just like his makeup. I mean, oh, nothing seems to phase him. And listen, he came into last season not expected to be the closer. I mean, a bullpen guy that they would use some. He was not highly recruited out of high school. But he's going to leave as the all time Florida leader in saves. In fact, if he gets a save tonight, he will tie that record at 25. He's been a huge part of this Florida team and, and I think was maybe a little bit unsung last year because their starters were so good. He closed out a lot of those big wins. Just off the plate. One and two the count. And Doze is still over at first base after a leadoff walk. That is your tying run. But there are two down here in the top half of the eighth. That one is fouled out of play. I know you saw him when you were down in Gainesville this past week. I saw him a couple of weeks before, but the plans for the new Gator baseball field is uh, something special. It's not small. 10,000 seater, $50 million for Florida. That will start in the fall this year. They'll be in there for opening day in 2020. It's right adjacent to the softball stadium. Softball stadium gets a major overhaul at the exact same time. Wow. Bornegal, they said he went around. I don't know about that. Bornegal doesn't believe it, but not much he can do about it. His third base umpire, Jason Bradley, rings him up. And Byrne comes in and shuts the door on the Seminoles, and they'll leave one. Well, Michael Byrne does kind of what Michael Burns used to do and comes out of the bullpen, gets a ground ball. Then strikeout, strikeout to end the inning. Florida State strands one. Well, the Seminole fans have been chirping since we went to break about the called strike three on. Rafael Bornegal, the in the eighth inning with a runner on. But this was the pitch. When I saw it the first time, I didn't think it was close. I mean, I didn't think there was any way it went. I would tell you, though, when we slow it down and see it, it it's, it's not as clearly a non swing. I still don't think he went. But it was closer, I initially thought that it was. It looked like Bornegal still held those hands up, though. Nick Horvath. I, I will say. I think for an umpire, that's about as I think that's a tough a call as you, as you can possibly make. I mean, it's real speed. You're trying to figure out whether or not the barrel of the bat crosses home plate. You're doing it from 130 feet away. It's it's not easy. Swing and a miss, and Carp just continues to pitch very well for Florida State. Just hadn't got a whole lot of help offensively. Let's strike out number seven for Andrew Carp, who really has looked comfortable. One walk in the first, one walk in the second. Hasn't walked anybody since. He's really used this one, though. Talking to Mike Bell, the pitch coach, before the ball game, and that was the one thing he said. Control the fastball when it's right allows Carp to do that. He can get into plus counts and really use that slider more. New right fielder, by the way, for Seminoles, Skyler Frey. 
checks into the game. You're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Deep. There is Skyler. The junior out of Sarasota, Florida. I was talking to Mike Martin Jr., better known as Meat, around the baseball circles. Says it's just nonstop. You start seeing all these kids, and it's the same way. I mean, I, I, very few people will out recruit Sully, if anybody will. But Meat's on the road as much. He says he got home from Chapel Hill Sunday night, said hello to the family, and out the door he yep. went. He's been on the road, met the team here, looking for talent. That's lifted in the air to left. Jackson Loop on the track makes the catch. So I walk in today. I'm going to have myself a little lunch right down the street from the hotel. And there's me sitting there just finishing up by himself because the team wasn't here. He drove separate from the team like you had just said. Got to hang out with him for about 45 minutes. And so we're on the field before the game. And Sully's asking him, or you're asking him questions about some of their guys. Yeah. And he's answering them. Kevin O'Sullivan looks at you. He's like, keep asking questions. Keep asking <laughs> right. questions. He's going to keep answering them. That's fine. Get him talking. Two guys that, while they're at obviously two programs that are big rivals of each other, clearly have a bunch of respect for each other. No they see each other on the recruiting path plenty. Obviously, in many cases, are recruiting the same kids, being not too far away in the same state. And let's face it, you're not going to go wrong in either place. It's just a matter of what's the better fit for you, right? I mean, it's simple as that. Hard to argue with the baseball history that either one of these two programs have. Florida State, I mean, in the time frame that Mike Martin has been there, you cannot make an argument that any any program in the country has been more consistent. I mean, it's it's impossible to be as consistent as they've been in the time that number 11 has been in that dugout. Maldonado behind 0 and 2. Carp throws one outside the zone. Carp's pitch count up to 97. He has pitched a gym. It's just for Seminole fans and, and for him, it's a shame he's trailing one to nothing because I don't know that you could ask him to pitch much better against this lineup. Little chopper right back to Carp. He'll be able to. Get it over to first, and now he'll need his bats to get cranked up as we will head to the ninth. Salvatore, Durr, and Luke. Durr and Luke went deep back to back on Sunday going against this guy. He has been shut down all year. Hey, Saturday, we're going to be hanging out at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium in Knoxville for the first game of the three-game series between 6th-ranked Georgia and 10th-ranked Tennessee. That's coming your way Saturday, 5 o'clock Eastern, 4 Central, right here on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. So here we go. Top of the ninth, first pitch, base hit, right back up the middle by the nine-hole hitter, Mike Salvatore. The second hit of the game, and it comes in the ninth. That's big for Florida State. Want to get your leadoff man on in Salvatore, who has some speed. Three stolen bases over the course of the season, but he also turned the lineup up. Or turned the lineup over. Nick Durr, the leadoff hitter, due up next. Fastball right down the middle. Salvatore just serves it right back where it came from. And there's a strike to Durr. Durr has five home runs this year. Coach Martin said he's been a work in progress. Offensively and defensively, but it's kind of coming together now. Powers really come out of nowhere, he said. Didn't expect any of it, but he has five long balls, and now it looks like that uh, bat might be broken. And here's the grand slam on Sunday in Chapel Hill that lifted the Seminoles to a victory 
over the Tar Heels. Not a lot of moving parts in that swing. It was a 5-4 game, or excuse me, 4-4 game when he hit that grand slam and then Luke right behind him hit another home run. Now it's one and one. Pretty good pitch there from Michael Byrne. Slider that looked like it may have just missed down, but not an easy one to take for Durr when you're already in an 0-1 count. One and two. Swing and a miss, strikeout. Out number one. Three straight sliders, and that's the one thing you see from Byrne. When he gets into big spots, I think that's the one he's most comfortable with. Nick Durr had taken the last two. One was for a ball, the second was for strike two. So he gets into a one-two a one count, and Byrne comes right back with that slider just off the plate in a spot that Durr just can't reach it. Jackson Luke, he'll look at a strike. The two hole hitter today. 0 for 3. There have been six 1 to nothing games in this 245 game series. There was even a nothing to nothing tie one year, but Florida State's won three of those 1 nothing games. Florida's won three of them. And last year, unfortunately for Andrew Carp, unless things can change here in the ninth. He struck out 11 Gators and lost one to nothing. And that's some rough baseball luck right there. You go back to back years and, and give up just one against this Florida offense and don't have any wins to show for. But we're not down here tonight. That's pretty good. No, swing sir. By that is scooped up by Dalton. And now they're at the corners for Florida State first and third. Only one out. Well, the reigning ACC player of the week staying hot right here against Michael Burns. Saw a first pitch slider that got him behind in the count. It looked like he got another one here. For the left-handed hitter, Jackson. Luke, watch him stay on it. It is a slider. It's out over the plate. But Luke does a great job of keeping the weight all the way back. Let's the barrel travel. Hooks it out to right center field. And Mike Salvatore able to go first to third on that one. That's the first base runner standing at third base tonight for Florida State. First one that's gotten past first. One first. That got to second. Yeah. Nobody's up in the Gator bullpen as Kevin well. O'Sullivan talks to Byrne. And you just wonder, you know, how much is in the tank for Michael Byrne after what was uh, a stressful Sunday in Gainesville? I think it's fair. I mean, he went three and two thirds inning Sunday. Threw over 35 pitches in that game against Arkansas. Now just one day's rest. Seminole fans think this is the inning to break through. If not, they'll be heading home. Number five and number two in the country. The baseball grounds here in Jacksonville, Florida. So Rhett Applin will step in. Applin hitting in the three hole playing first base a couple of strikeouts a walk. Average at 284. Does have a couple of home runs. And he was trying to get one out of here on that swing. Zach Fly will tie this up. And now he's behind one and two. Now, if you're Michael Byrne, you got to think strikeout. You get to a one two count. You can run that change up down and away. See if you can get Applin to swing over the top of it. Could elevate a fastball up and in. Florida State leads the country in sack flies with 20. They would love to push it to 21 right here. Called strike three.
Big pinch right there. Threw him a changeup that Apple just couldn't pull the trigger on. I thought it might be just a little bit off the plate. I think that's exactly what Apple was looking at, too. But for Michael Byrne, when he gets in that two strike count, when that tie and run standing on third base, less than two outs, you have to think strikeout. I think depth wise, it was fine. It did look like it might be a little bit off the plate, probably too close to take. It's another strikeout for Michael Byrne, his fourth. Well, the heart and soul of this team. Cal Raleigh steps in, your cleanup hitter, the catcher. Ground ball to the right side, scooped up by Bell, and the Gators hold on. Florida State had him at the corners with one out and couldn't get the tying run home, and Florida wins it one to nothing. 25th career save for Michael Byrne. That ties the all-time Florida record. He had to work a little bit harder than maybe he wanted in the ninth inning. First and third, one out for Florida State. Gets a strikeout to Red Applin for the second out. And it gets Cal Raleigh to roll over one. A good job by Keenan Bell to go get it on the short hop. For the second straight game, it's a ground ball to first base in a one-run ball game that ends it with that guy on the mound, Michael Byrne. Does what we are so used to seeing him do. He had to bat a little bit to get there. But the Gators come out one to one nothing. The Gators go to 22 and five on the year. Florida State drops to 20 and six. We'll come back, have more, put a wrap on things from the baseball game grounds here in Jacksonville. A one to nothing Florida win.